New documents released by the British Land Registry in 2017 revealed the existence of a network of tunnels under the streets of Britain. Welcome to the fascinating mystery of the United Kingdom's underground tunnels. For decades, Great Britain's mysterious tunnel systems have been a source of fascination and authorities have been conspicuously secretive about them until recently. New documents released by the British Land Registry in 2017 revealed the existence of a network of tunnels under the streets of Britain, with details on 3.5 million land and property titles under the ownership of councils, housing associations, companies, and corporations such as the Post Office, British Telecom, and the Ministry of Defense. Private photographs and documents of the Cabinet's rooms, built in 1939 and used by His Excellency Sir Winston Churchill, were also released for the first time in 2016. The protected military accommodation is linked by tunnels and elevator shafts. Four principal rooms are His Excellency Sir Winston Churchill's bedroom and study, the telephone room, the map room and the cabinet room, where Prime Minister Churchill and high-ranking officers would have their meetings. The cabinet rooms were abandoned in 1945 and 40 years later opened to the public, drawing an enormous amount of interest. In 2014, the Ministry of Defense sold the Whitehall building above the cabinet rooms and the secret tunnel to the Raffles hotel chain for £350 million. Named the OWO, this London landmark is set to open in 2022 as one of the world's highest profile hotels. West of London is another covert underground Ministry of Defense site called MOD Corsham, formerly known as Basil Hill Barracks, located between the towns of Corsham and Box near Bristol. Commissioned in 1955, the enormous 35-acre complex measures more than a kilometer or 0.62 miles long and is 37 meters or 121 feet underground. The facility was built to accommodate all the United Kingdom's cabinet office and the prime minister as well as other military and government staff in the event of a national emergency. The underground city housed hospitals, kitchens, laundrettes, canteens and accommodation. An underground lake provided drinking water and an underground power station had enough fuel in store to keep the generators running for up to three months. People could travel easily on electric buggies with roads created especially for this purpose. Special accommodation suites with private bathrooms were finished to such a high standard that it is believed to have been built to accommodate the royal family. Back in London, underneath Chancery Lane underground station, lies the Kingsway Telephone Exchange, which was built in the early 1940s as a deep shelter. However, it was never used for that purpose and instead served as a government communications center. In 1949, the site was given to the General Post Office, responsible for telephones and the postal system. Originally, the shelter had two tunnels, but an additional four were added. In 1956, it became the United Kingdom termination point for the first transatlantic telephone cable. For over two decades, 
the exchange served as a trunk switching center and repeater station with a staff of over 200, a staff restaurant, games room and tea bar. It is possible to walk the 6 kilometers or 3.7 miles from the underground headquarters to East London and emerge on a traffic island in the middle of a highway. Data regarding land ownership provided by the land registry and supplemented by the investigative work of Mr. Guy Shrubsall was mapped and published in his book Who Owns England? Guy went down the Kingsway tunnels with other research explorers. He stated, It is an astonishing time capsule down there probably the 70s in terms of decor. It feels like an underground space station almost, with these winding tunnels that go on and on forever but are filled with dusty equipment. He was only able to gain access to one part of the tunnel system as the other parts were bricked off. It appeared that some parts are still being used as there was lighting in the tunnels. Mark Ovenden author of the book Underground Cities, Mapping the Tunnels, Transits and Networks Underneath Our Feet, wrote about London. It also possesses one of the world's most diverse varieties of intricate, hidden and well-used passages, ducts and tubes beneath its streets. He considers that this is because London was one of the busiest and most modern cities in the world and therefore the need to use the spaces below the city was greater than anywhere else. A collaboration known as Project Iceberg between the Connected Places Catapult, the British Geological Survey and the Ordnance Survey attempts to amass subterranean data in London. This long-term project strives to record and map all tunnels, underground transport information and underground utilities such as sewerage, water, electricity and gas. Let's take a moment to appreciate the magnificent wonders surrounding us. We'll be right back here on Supreme Master Television. Please stay tuned. Welcome back to the fascinating mystery of the United Kingdom's underground tunnels. Heading northeast of London, another famous set of underground tunnels, known as the Victoria Tunnel, is in Newcastle. Measuring about 3.6 kilometers or 2.25 miles long, its construction took 200 men, 2 years and 10 months to complete. Between 1842 and the 1860s, the Victoria Tunnel was used to transport coal from Spittle Tongues Colliery to the banks of the River Tyne for loading onto ships. In 1939, the tunnel was reopened to house 9,000 residents as a shelter from air conflict. In 2006, after many repairs and added safety measures, the tunnels were again reopened as a tourist attraction. Guided tours allowed tourists to enter a short section of the tunnel around 700 meters or 0.4 miles long. Landform surveys carry out annual checks to monitor for movement to ensure the structure of the tunnels are sound. In the northwestern city of Manchester, there was a surge of underground projects during the Victorian era, including the building of the Victoria Arches in the embankment of the River Irwell, which, for health and safety reasons, is not open to the public. 
Further south and towards the Welsh border is Ironbridge, Shropshire. Here, the Tar Tunnel, a brick-lined transport tunnel, was dug into the hillside in the late 18th century. Miners discovered the presence of bitumen, a black treacle-like substance, and the transport project was rejected in favor of tar extraction. At the time, bitumen was used to treat and weatherproof ropes, and small amounts were processed and bottled as a remedy for rheumatism and scurvy. Visitors to the tunnel today can see bitumen oozing through the gaps in the brick walls. It is unsafe to enter the tunnel, but tourists can view it from the entrance. Traveling to the southwestern peninsula of England, beneath the county of Cornwall's countryside, are 14 tunnels dating back 2,400 years. These tunnels, called Fagus, after the Cornish word Ogo, meaning cave, were built by opening up trenches in the ground and placing stone slabs for walls. Topped with capstones, the fagus were then backfilled to the top. For the casual observer of the picture-perfect countryside, few can see the tapestry of stones and mounds of the many ancient ruins. The best preserved fagu in Cornwall is Haldegai Fagu. The first chamber is 1.8 meters or 5.9 feet high and 8.4 meters or 27.6 feet long. The adjoining tunnels are low and narrow. Their purpose remains a mystery as they are not designed for easy access. Bowden Fogu, some 5 kilometers or 3 miles northeast of Haligai Fogu, was accidentally discovered by a farmer working the land. Excavations uncovered an S-shaped fogu, roundhouses and enclosures. One of the roundhouses is 3,400 years old and contains over 3,000 artifacts. A little further north, in the county of Devon, are several unique tunnels providing access to beautiful areas of coastline and a Victorian tidal swimming pool. Located in Ilfracum, Devon, a bathhouse was erected in 1836 to offer hot and cold water sea baths for health treatments and the area is also home to an awe-inspiring beachfront wedding venue. All are inaccessible by any means other than the tunnels. A team of Welsh miners were hired by the Ilfracum Sea Bathing Company to carve the six tunnels, which are known as Tunnels Beaches. Still on the southern English coast, our final tunnel is at Consort House in Brighton, East Sussex. Consort House features an unusual than the rabbit hole style tunnel that leads into lush gardens and a beachfront. It is believed that the tunnel inspired the iconic writer Lewis Carroll to write Alice's adventures in Wonderland after his visit there. The magnificent five-story house was sold for £3.4 million in 2016. Britain's fascinating underground tunnels are not only historically revealing, but also inspirational, telling stories of mystery and times long past, sparking the imagination and also informing our future. Gracious viewers, it has been a great pleasure to have your company today.